Hey, what is up, you guys? That is Tyler. Welcome back, back, back to the Tyler Williams channel. Welcome to another day of Map Based Combat Presents G1 Climax. We are on day four of the G1 Climax. It is day two for B Block. We had some great matches that saw some people go forward, and some people are still a goose egg. Who will make it on to four points? Who will be stuck at two and who might sadly be stuck at zero? We're going to find out on this episode. On commentary, I have Franklin and Nate. I don't know how the reference he is. But we're going to get straight into this episode nonetheless. Woo! I'm pretty hyped. So first match we're starting off here is going to be really good. We got Felix Ashwood versus Chadwick. Chad walking into this with two points. Felix walking in with Zip. Now, the interesting thing here is that Felix Ashwood main evented day two against Shin Gikido, a match where a lot of people said that Felix was unworthy of being in the main event of any G1 Climax show, let alone the first for their block. Uh, what are you guys' um, opinions on his performance, and do you think he can make it a bit further in the tournament given... I thought he proved himself uh, relatively well. Sure, he didn't win, but... He got as close as he possibly could. Uh, I mean, when you're facing a guy the caliber of Shingekido, there's nothing wrong with losing. Yeah, no, not not at all, not at all. And I think in his case, going 22 minutes with that guy, it showed that he could hang with anyone in his block, and including Jinkaze, who is going to be made event against Moses here tonight, a man who he plans on clean sweeping, which might be his biggest challenge yet. But nonetheless, guys... Someone Felix is facing is one of the guys who trained him, if not the sole person who trained him in Prodigy, that being Chadwick. Now, well, we did not see Felix Ashwood on Prodigy TV because he was in the midst of being trained in the dojo. But we're getting to see him now in map-based combat. So, what do you think is going to be the uh, the dynamic here between a uh, teacher-student, especially because we didn't really get the the teacher really never got to see the student really grow? In well, NFL. Chadwick is looking to clean sweep this block he wants to be undefeated and felix ashwood is just another person in the way tonight and he's gonna try to run through him as fast as possible i think well you think the chip on the sh the chip on the shoulder is to chadwick i think the chip on the shoulder is to felix from what we know that second batch was kind of considered the leftovers of the first batch they were kind of considered the, the shun students the one that weren't progressing as fast and Felix didn't make it onto television partially because of that shunning from Chadwick and the other trainers at the Prodigy Dojo. Which is, Felix is going to enter this match with a ship on his shoulder. He's got something to prove. He, does. he doesn't want to be that rejected guy anymore. And after having arguably his breakout performance against Shin Gikido, you think he's going to be even more motivated now that he has that confidence in himself that I took a veteran from your era that beat you for a championship that you held... I took that guy to the limit. So what's to say I can't take you to the limit, too? Yeah, I totally agree with you. And, you know, it's very, very cool to think that Chadwick, coming into this, has only wrestled one match since Prodigy, and that was against Moses. Well, no, I keep on saying that. One singles match. Second singles match. I'm still botching here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm old. Leave me alone. Okay? <laughs> Wait, hold know. on. <laughs> So this boy has one Watch good up. match yeah. where Chadwick's had consistent great matches all through his AWC career. And he's starting to show that he's just as good in that ring. And you're going to try to put him down and say that Felix has so much potential because he went 20 plus minutes with Shin Gikido. Listen, Andy, He got lucky. Listen, he is no he is no legend. He's no guy who's been wrestling for 20 years. Felix Ash has only been in the ring for about, I believe, like four to five years. And on top of that, he's young. He's 23. Oh, Felix, dipping <laughs> out of the ring early. Doesn't want any work. He looks kind of frustrated here. Wait, Chadwick, springboard crossbody on a Felix Ashwood. As I was saying. Chadwick said, I don't care. Taking a bow. Bow to your master, Chadwick is saying here. Felix not fade for that. Of course he's going to taunt. He knows he has the edge over him because he, he knows Felix. He, he took a, part, a big, huge part in his training. Wait a minute. Chadwick pumping. Same way to put away Moses. One. Two. I'll only get to two count. 
at and, any point, you know, that be a lot less successful than it was back in the day. I think people kind of scouted that move now. Yeah, especially because Chad. Wait, but Chadwick, another try. A another pin, pin. Here we go. One. One. Chadwick oh. trying to end this as quick as possible. Chadwick said, "You're not worth the energy, son." I guess not. I mean, think about it. I really never seen Chadwick try to put away the mats quite like this. But Felix isn't going down at all. Oh, spinning back oh. kick to the head. And appealing. Hey, Felix is kick. not going down. Felix is not. Wait, Chadwick. Chadwick, another roll up. One. Oh. Two. And Dude. Felix takes out again. God damn it. This is is there anyone that's as good of a map based wrestler as Chadwick? I can't think I of this one. And Chadwick making kind of quick work here. He's going straight for the coast to coast. It's only been like, what, two minutes into the match? He said, you're not worth it. <laughs> Felix asked we're going 22 minutes with Chad with uh, Shin Gakito, but might oh, be only going no. three minutes with Chadwick coast here after hitting the coast to coast. I don't know if he connected that so well, though. He like he didn't get all of it, but nonetheless, Chadwick is trying to run through Felix Ashwood as quick as possible, rolling out of the ring. Wait, Felix caught him! STO! Shades of evil. evil. I don't know if about everything being evil in this match, but Felix Ashwood is throwing hands with Chadwick. Chadwick is not known as the world's best striker on his hand. Oh, wait. He's flexing on him. You should probably shouldn't front <laughs> Chadwick. Wait a minute, Chadwick! Springboard dropkick. I move Felix Asper Not tries to hit. People that can flex on Chadwick. Yeah, no. Not at all. Felix Ashwood looks like he's kind of struggling in this match. And his trainer has his number. Going to the top. And he did train him. That's the thing. He trained Moses too, and he beat Moses in ten minutes. Looks like he get. Is he already out of breath? He's talking a little bit, but. Tony too long nope. and Felix takes him oh, down. Oh, took too long there. Here we go, Felix. This is your chance. Chad got to take down the Bulldog. No time wasted. Not at Chad all. Chadwick wrestling a little bit of a faster pace. Very you know, fast. <laughs> if you uh, saw these two guys' ages and you saw the way they were moving, you, you would think it was backwards. Wait a minute! Wait, Felix going that way! He caught him! He oh caught no! Him. Up on the shoulders! A fireman's carry slam for Felix Ashwood! And he's starting to feel the heat now! But Chadwick is right back up! Nope, and I Felix put him right back down! Getting into it! Here we go! You know, I've never been a fan of Felix Ashwood, but I don't know, there's something about his energy in these matches that just makes you want to see him One, win! Two! two. On a close one Ooh, there, but not that quite was it. so close. That was really close. I think that little burst of energy shot Chadwick. I don't think he was expecting that at all. Felix trying to figure out what, what can I do here. He might be going for Kawabunga. Can he hit it? Is the question. <laughs> he seems to be going for a hot tag there. Oh, decided against it. Wait, Chadwick turns it around. Reverse DDT planting Felix down. Chadwick instead is already back to some map based over. wrestling. Oh, that, now. That, that, that Matt wrestling. Chadwick's showing off a bit here. Pulling him right back to the center. Ooh, Jesus, looks like he's right targeting down. the body for now. And Chadwick, you know, setting up for here. Lion Salt! For the pin! One! One. Two. Two! Felix kicks out of the lion salt. Chadwick. Going to the outside. What is this? Looking for something big. He said it's over. Wait, is this? Springboard shooting star press from Chadwick! For the pin! One! One! Two! two three! And that's three. enough to put Felix down! Chadwick. And Chadwick just descended from the upper echelon. Chadwick is one of those guys that he has his finishers, but he can put you away with just about anything else if he chooses to. Right there, using a springboard shooting star press. Will his momentum continue to be this hot, though? He has four points. He's leading his block four as we speak. Four points is a good start. As we speak, he leads his block. 
And I would say it was an impressive showing for Chadwick here. Felix gave it his all, but Chadwick, at the end of the day, comes out victorious. He gave just a little bit more. He dominated that match. I would say he had, he was in control the whole time. If anything, I would say he gave Felix opportunities to try and get some offense in. Chadwick Walls in with four points. If you get on to the next match, ladies and gentlemen, TJ Shadows versus Stoner. A match a lot of people have been looking forward to. I myself am looking forward to. Stoner walks into this zero points, losing to Brad Rory Bradshaw on night one, one of the biggest shockers of the G1 so far. TJ Shadows walking in with zero points as well, taking a loss to Jen Kaze in a first round, first day for B Block. And now these two are very close friends. They're former tag partners, their former rivals. Uh, their story is, runs almost as deep as that of Jinkaze and TJ Shadows. Yeah, I agree with you there. And, you know, it's it's very interesting going into this match because you have TJ Shadows, a man who a few years ago, I'm not even a few years ago, a long time ago was in A2 Climax and almost made it into the finals. But it was uh, stopped. Then in his tracks, and ever since then, he's been looking to kind of get that, get that, uh, you know, feeling back and get back into round robin tournaments. And this is it. If he could win this, he could go on to face like Suji Goda, a match I would love to see. Match Suji Goda versus TJ Shadows at a Wrestle Kingdom? No. That would be one very resilient, stiff match. Exactly. He doesn't want to tarnish his family name, but he does, also doesn't want to tarnish his legacy. See, he has a big legacy going back into the AWC. He's probably one of the best of his time, always main eventing, always showing that he was one of the top guys. But at times, he just couldn't take the belt. And now one of the best guys to never hold the AWC World Championship. He's held world titles all around the world. AWC was not one of those places, but he looks to hold it here. And if he can at least make it far, at least run her up in his block, he might be put into the consideration. Here's a guy that's going to that might be able to stop him in that road, and that is Stoner, a guy who's uh kind of taken that that supporter, that bodyguard role to Alejandro Leva. Yeah, Alejandro always making sure to have the right person by his side, whether it be Jay Blaze or Dane or Stoner. Now we had this promo package come up during Alejandro's match, and that kind of took him off guard, and he low blow David in the process. It looks like I'd be going through Stoner's mind after seeing that the night before. Who knows? I don't know. Stoner seems like not, he's a bit... I think that was directed at Stoner. I think that was more directed at Alejandro's. That is true. I mean, he seems a bit unshaken here. He's focusing. I, you gotta be focused on to match CJ Shadows. I mean, just look at the performance he had against Shinkazi in just a limited match. They put their all into that 11 minutes. Now, a very often told story within their matches is Stoner targeting TJ Shadows back. TJ Shadows has sustained multiple injuries in matches against Stoner now. None of them were done with the intent to injure, but Stoner is a very smart, methodical wrestler. Think he might go back to that? I think he's going to go right to it right now. Oh, there we go. Putting him down with a gut run suplex. Drop straight on his back. Ooh, yeah, walking on him, too. Over. And right kicked right to the back. See, he heard you. TJ Shadows a bit unmoved by that offense. Got right back up to his feet. TJ retaliated with a PK kick of his own. Looks like he was trying to keep him down. TJ just last put lots out for those big elbows from Stoner. He has those elbow pads on for a reason. Ooh, TJ is slapping the hell out of Stoner, but he's not being moved at all. Like I said, this match always gets personal. Listen, they came for if these people came from Stiff, then they're gonna they're gonna get it. Whenever you see these two in the ring, they're going to hit each other as hard as they possibly can. And they could get a bit raunchy sometimes. I mean, I've seen TJ kick Stoner so hard, his skin was starting to turn red and purple. I was starting to get scared oh, for it. No. I almost stopped the match, but then it ended because TJ put him down with his shadow stop. Oh, dropped on into his knee. He's targeting the back just like you said. You know, and he's not going to stop. The, uh, the never open weight six-man championships. He's not just wrestling with his own expectations in mind. He's wrestling with the expectations of his faction as well. 
Exactly. That if, if TJ loses, you would think that that puts whoever beats them in contention to choose two partners of their own and challenge for the never open weight six man titles. That affects not just TJ but Sukunkaze and Abel. Exactly. Now, of course, that wouldn't matter to Jin because Jin is part of that faction. Oh, knee right to the back of the head. But someone like Stoner, who represents Mid Card Empire, that could immediately get them a title shot very soon. So TJ's got to be looking. Uh, oh, a big headbutt to the head. Stoner, like I said, right on the top rope and a flatliner. What is Stoner's loyalty really, though? We, you know, Stoner kick. No, TJ. Take down. Oh, a hurt Like, from TJ do you Shatter. think the moment opportunity comes for him, he's going to ditch Midcard Empire? Or do you think Here's that he's thing. actually got like a lead? I think Midcard Empire does not have any strong style based wrestlers. Alejandro sought opportunity. TJ lifting up Stoner there. Even if just for a quick second with that scoop slam. Here we go. TJ cutting me off here. He says, pay attention to me with the TJR. And no, I think that uh, Alejandro saw opportunity for getting One, a strong star in his two. faction. Stoner yep. has trained yep. in Japan not for a long time, but long enough to qualify under the pure wrestling game. So he said, hey, join my faction. Let's get up there. Because Alejandro technically cannot compete for a world title because he doesn't have much Japanese experience unless he gets a pin over Suji Goda in this tournament. Then he can contend. But as of right now, he can't really contend for it. Well, if he were to win the if he were to win the G1, he would also get. Oh the yeah, he will also contend if you win a G1. But in normal circumstances, unless you have pure wrestling experience, you cannot contend for the world title. As Stoner goes for the pin here, one oh. and kick out. See, so yeah, Stoner in a sense is in his faction to represent you know, that strong style part of this company. And a lot of people kind of say that Stoner was taken out. Well, I mean, King was taken out in place of Stoner. Read by that as you may. But Stoner could be a very big adversary to Midcard Empire. And if he beats T.A. Shadows here, that just proves it. I think Stoner could very well be. But now, if Stoner gets the world title somehow, if he's the one to beat Suji Goda... What's that going to say for Alejandro? You think there might be some tension there? Well, Alejandro, Alejandro to be the biggest fish in the pond. Well, Alejandro's the IC title. You know, IC title is his baby. Of course, he's hungry and he wants more. But I think Alejandro wouldn't be as jealous as long as he's the IC champion. I think if he loses the IC championship at any point, then there's going to be a bit of a dissension there. Is Stoner going for a muscle buster? Oh, muscle! Not quite the shattered buster. heaven, but almost nearly as effective. Could put TJ down. That move is nearly paralyzed people. Four one, pin, one, one two, two, and a kick out. And the move has ended careers, realistically. Stoner could be going for Shattered Heaven here. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, does he have him up? He has him up. Yeah. Shattered Heaven. Shattered TJ Shattered Heaven. 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 Foot up in one. one. Two, two. TJ kicks out of Shadow Heaven. Almost instinctively there. Facing off so many times, you think TJ Shadows kind of already has him figured out, in a sense. Well, we kind of yeah. already built up a resiliency to that move, I should say. TJ, take him down with a DDT. Could he be going he really for a moment of silence? Him, though. We haven't really seen TJ go for the shadow stomp at all in this tournament, but he's going for the moment of silence. Could have put him away. Moment of... Oh, oh out, of way. out of the way. TJ putting him down with another DDT. I spoke too soon. He might be going for the shadow stomp here. Here we go, it's TJ. over. Shadow, wait, T wait. Oh, caught him with the elbow on the way down, though. Stoner got up really quickly from that. Kind of had to think on his feet. I will give TJ that. He, he saw that faster Sometimes than I did. Sometimes your opponent changes the plan, man. Listen, I give TJ all the credit in the world because I did not expect Stoner to get up that quickly. TJ kind of had that figured out and just said, you know what? Not going to go for a stomp. Let me go for elbow drop instead. TJ. Neckbreaker, neckbreaker onto the outside. And has to do a massive damage to the next. Let's see if it's that TGR later on in the match. Stoner is bringing that fight. With those big hits. 
He definitely has brought it throughout this whole match. And, you know, both both guys have taken control uh, or taken control of this match at some point. But neither has really been able to keep that control for long. Yeah, that I agree with you on. As we try to figure out here who is going to be walking into their block with two points as both men walk into this match with zero. One losing the battery, Bradshaw, and now losing the Jen Kaze. Could be a count out. Well, it is a 20 count, so they won't be counting out unless they go to a 20. He's taking full advantage of this. Sending Stone into the steel steps. Now, I might want to get him in the ring soon. That being now. Now's the time. 20 count or not, you don't want to be out there for very long. Lose track of no, time. Don't blame me on that. TJ, double legs right to the crotch area. Should be disqualification, but on the last, a little leniency there from the referee. Ooh, went for a sliding elbow, but Stoner got up to his feet. Oh, put him down with a big lariat. And Stoner just has those massive arms. It's about anything he does. Deadlift. Ooh, placing him down. But he rolls out on the apron. This time, TJ. Ooh, TJ with a big boot to the head. Scouted there by TJ Shadows. Here we go. Go for the shadow stop. Can't do it from Wait. that far. Stoner! 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 Oh Get my TJ god! Shadows! Oh my god! Holy shit. It's over. Wait, what? What the hell? Um, Is that a pig? What? Is that a pig? Did I just see a pig in the ring? I don't know. TJ with this... What just happened? I knew these two had beef, but not like that. One, One two, two, three. Three, and TJ gets the pin. Oh, for distraction. Oh, for I think this that guy would have a little more respect. That, right? I, I, wait, you guys all saw that, right? I'm not, I'm not tripping. No, oh, what happened? There was a pig in the ring. I don't know if I was elucidating or not. I haven't like taken the, any second. Like a that drug trip, but no, I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure we all saw it. That was weird, but nonetheless, TJ Shadows two points. Look like a character out of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie or something. Yeah, it was a bloody pig. Like he was being slaughtered. He's being bred for slaughter in a sense. But nonetheless, TJ Shadows saw his time to capitalize. He is willing to do whatever it takes to get those points. As sure, I'm sure everyone would. Coin coin. On to the next match, guys. Bad Roy Bradshaw versus Shane Nikito. Both men walk into this match with two points. Who's going to walk out with four and be tied with Chadwick? I got to go with my man Shane Nikito here. I do, I too. I think the Bad Roy strong. definitely did shock everybody with his stoner win. And this would solidify him. This would be the biggest thing. If he could take down Shingo Hito, because that means he took down two people of the past era of AWC. Oh yeah, this is definitely would be a huge rise in his career if he could get this win over Shingo Hito. Beating Shingo Hito and Stoner back to back, he, he could back paint. Target, that would yeah. get you a world title match. He could paint his way all the he way to should. success. He can do that. Listen, a listen. After tonight, he has Chadwick on day six, so he's he's got a, he's got to work out. Chin Barry Bradshaw is the wild card in this turn in this uh, entire tournament. I think we all could agree on that. Exactly. In his block alone, he is a wild card, so he has a lot to prove going into all of his matches, all of them, even against Felix. I would say, who shocked everyone in his match against yeah, I mean, both. I would say Chadwick Felix and as much. Chin. Crap as he gets, he earned his way into this tournament by winning a battle royal. Battle Royal Bradshaw exactly. was given his spot. Yeah, by man. Man was chosen to be in this tournament, not Bad Roy. So he cannot he cannot at all make this seem like he was destined to be in this tournament. He has to play on his word that he is going to win this tournament for man, for his faction, Ring Doyen. So far so good though. So far so good. We'll see how long that lasts. That could be his only win in this tournament, which would be very upsetting, but it is a possibility. And here comes Shin Gakito, the Grandmaster. The Samurai, as he's dressing up as here. Yep, he's been doing that for a little while. 
Well, Shinji Kido has played homage to the uh, red oni and blue oni uh, trope. Here he's kind of going as the gold oni. The gold oni it is. Maybe that can take him to the end and possibly win his block. His final challenge being Jin Kazi, a man who he has never beaten. It's going to be quite a challenge, but going into that, he's going to... Even if he beats Jin Kazi, if he doesn't have the points in order to stack that up, he could still lose the tournament. So he's got to keep this run going. He can't put, he can't reserve too much energy on Jin Kazi. He's got to put his all in on all these matches. And a lot of people, myself included, think that his match against Felix was a weak performance from him. I mean, you're a veteran. It shouldn't take you that long to beat a 23-year-old man with, you know, four years of experience and goofs off all Yeah, the time. he's missing the factor he used to have. But you also got to remember, it's, it's been a while. It's match back. Exactly. You gotta and I've never been hot on this guy. I've never liked this guy. Bad but I'm willing right to give him a ground. chance. Bad Rory or Shingakito? Shingakito. I never really thought he was that big, even in AWC days. But I think he's definitely... He has all the tools to improve, even at his old age. Bad Rory being a... Uh map based catch style wrestler he's you're not gonna out wrestle bad Roy net but you can out strike him i will give shin that exactly and hip toss keep there with the go. japanese style yeah you try to wrestle bad Roy's game and you're gonna lose felix did not try at all but well, here shin stiffen him with those strikes and then knocked him down and knocked him loopy he kneeled down to one knee he wins for something, but Bad Roy with the counter. Could it be said that maybe Bad Roy is a superior technical wrestler here? Oh, I would say so. Damn, his legs clutching that ropes on the way down. That kind of really badly if he ricocheted off. But he needs to Bad turn Roy this into so a striking match because I don't think Bad Roy can do striking nearly as good as Shin. Yeah, but he can out wrestle Shin, and he can out muscle him. Yeah, we saw that already. Just stomping right on the midsection. You just have to take so the match far, and make taking, it your style. Well, going for a kick and he automatically got out of it, but Bad Roy with the reversal. It's not the strength of the strikes, but the speed. Shin with the reversal. Shin is a speedier striker. There we go. Close on right to the back of the head. I'll say it once and well, you said it once and I'll say it again. It sticks. If Shin sticks to the striking game, it will be a win for him. Bad Rory, that's the same submission Shin used on Felix in his match. Kicking dirt on a man while he's down is just going to waken the beast. I would not do that. And there's a big Larry into the corner there from Shin. There we go. Yep, and he, Shin, he Shin didn't like that at all that too much. Know. Yep, didn't like that all too much. He knew what he was doing when he did that submission. He said, put some respect on my name. Exactly. And here we go, going for the accent right to the back of the head. There we go. Oh, he's setting up for it. Shin might be trying to end it early. Going for that grand suplex. Here we go. Grand suplex. Jesus oh. Christ. Landing straight on his yeah, head. Yeah, he might be injured. One. One. Two. Two. Oh, and Battery's still going at it. Not ready to go at all. Not ready to take it all just yet. Shin Gakita, we've seen him do those suplexes at much bigger heights. You can tell he's uh, getting a bit older and a little bit weaker because he's not getting those opponents up for a He doesn't want to explain to man dangerous. that he lost this tournament. Now, uh, yesterday when he did it to Felix, I can understand because Felix is way heavier, but he just did it to man who's a little bit lighter than Felix. Mm, that work. Well, no, he did it to Felix yesterday and well, I, he did the same thing. No, you said man instead of that. Oh, I meant that work. I meant that work. Yeah, my point is, he did it to Felix yesterday. Felix there is heavy. There we go. He's using so those strikes to wear him down so he can get him in for those bigger moves. Chops. Ooh. Oh, but one too many. Minute. One too many. He's going to... German suplex into the corner. Oh, my hey. Lord. Bouncing off ropes. Ooh. Oh, Jesus. And a kick right to the back. He is... I, oh, I wow. Bad Warrior is not wasting any time. Bad Warrior is going straight for the neck game of... Oh, my God. Wanted to see him bounce a little bit. Do you see the height he got on Shin? 
Well, Bad Ori doesn't win this match. It's definitely coming out party for the guy. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's coming out party. His match against Stoner wasn't okay. anything. I mean, Bad Roy like, has the bigger muscles, to be fair. He does. You could definitely I mean, manhandle always, him if he wants to. That's not always to. a factor, especially in this more technical, strike-based style of wrestling that we have here. A lot of times it's about speed and precision. Pacing. Yeah, but if he can manhandle... Barry to Larry to the outside, but oh, Shin's in one to the top. Question is, who does this benefit on the outside? Shin doesn't even want to know. Put him right back in the ring. Good idea. He's going for that suplex one more time. Grand suplex could be enough. Ooh, Grand suplex on once again. again. Every time it just looks worse than the other. And it could one, be enough. One. Two. Two. No. Oh, and he kicks out of a second one. This kid's hot tonight. Uh, I'll give him credit. He's hanging in. And every time he hangs in, Shin is getting angrier. What he's going to, have to do put him down is the question that I have on my head and right now. Every time he gets angrier, he kind of lowers his guard. Yeah. The longer he goes, I think the more frustrated he gets in, in history of show. And the longer you go in Shin's matches, he starts to look a little, uh... Tired? A little doubtful. Yeah. I thought he was going to go for a Boston Crab there for a second. I thought he was too. Wait, Battery has the hand trap. He's going to stomp on the fingers of Shin, Gakito, of Shin Gakito. Oh, he might be going for that bad, bad pile driver. If he can hit it, it's over. One put down. Shin. Oh. oh, and he countered it. One put down Stoner last night. If he can hit it on this time, it could put down Shin. Counter, counter here. Ramming his head right into the corner. This has been a little, uh, I wouldn't say 50-50. I would say more 60 in the favor. Of, he's going for it again. Can he hit it this time? Chin is not giving him the chance. Back up, but no. Kent's up with a side on suplex. He really likes taunting the tonight. put on by these two men. Uh, he's really feeling himself. Yeah. Yeah, and it's gonna be it. Uh, it's gonna be the end of him if he keeps on doing it. I don't know. It hasn't cost him yet. It's cost Shin more when he's done it. Yeah, but I do agree with you on that. Shin's backing him into the corner. Oh, knee to the stomach. But oh, did you see Shin cuts his leg there? I don't know. Maybe he injured yeah. himself. Shin like he hurt himself when I wait. Bad way headbutt. He's not done. He's going for more headbutts. Another headbutt to Shin. Damn. Well, you were Bad watching Rory's an really evil match there. Tonight. Exactly. And a big chop. Bad Warrior's been really impressing me tonight. He's hitting all the combos. He's had like a Dark Horse tournament overall so far. Pretty much. If anything, I actually kind of want to see Bad Warrior win this match. It'd be interesting to see how far he can go if he gets a win here. Wait, shit. Oh, Shin powered him down with that Spine Buster. And add a kick to the back. That's not going to do it. One. Oh. Yeah. So not even yeah, what he said. It's not even close. Not at all. Battery's back up to his feet already. Wait, there's a cross face. He has locked in on Shin. Oh, no. He's going to. Nope. Oh, Shin gets out of that pretty quickly. Yeah, they don't call him the Grandmaster. They powered him right back down with a sword block. One. One. I don't two, know, guys. Two. Two. Every. He struggled with Felix last night. It seems like he's struggling with Battery here too. I don't think this. this is I don't think this is the same thing Gikita that beat Jinkaze. Not at all, if you ask me. And then took Jinkaze. To he is him. struggling. He's struggling way too hard in these matches. Battery is just walking into the corner. He is taunting Shin. He's saying, "Bring it on!" And Shin says, "Okay." Swing and neckbreaker. I think Battery may have been his own worst enemy there. I don't know. Every time it seems like he we say that, he's right back up to his feet. What is this? Swinging gut buster. What else can this man do? Cross face? Nope. Shin sent the right back down to earth. Bad Warrior already rolled back to his feet with a twisting uppercut. 
Jesus Christ. I don't know if Bad Rory is just, you know, the stronger man or Shin is just getting weaker with age. Where is that charisma coming from from Bad Rory? I was just I don't about know, but it was to say STO. that. That STO put him down earlier. Can he hit that? A third one. Here we go. Grand Another suplex. Another grand suplex, and that might be it. He's close to the ropes. Third one. Oh, he's bringing him to the middle. Uh, the Grandmaster. There we go. For the pin. One. one two. Two. No. And a third one. No, no, no. Not today. I don't know. She might have to use a different move here. If these moves aren't putting their opponent down. What else does he have? I mean, he used that uh, that dragon sleeper yesterday, Devil Smoke Sleeper. You think that would be enough? He didn't put Felix away because he had rope breaks, but... Oh, there's that shoot-style kick and a pick up a bad word rolls out of the way. Sham retaliating. Or and a pretty good match put on by these two men. Now Shin is starting to get a bit into it. Jen realizing that his, uh, his chances are dissipating here every time he keeps going longer. Probably tired of people Great like job. you doubting him. I mean, have you seen his performance these last few matches? Do I, uh, do I, is my reason to doubt him not credible to you? It's a little bit credible, but like Franklin and I have Bad pointed Roy out, has him up he's a power just bomb. Wait coming a back. Bad Roy walking him into the corner with the power bomb. Going for that bad, bad prowl driver. He didn't hit it. He hit he it. it this I time. No, nope. carrying nope. it. Got out of it. Full oh, throat thrust. Shin is tired. See it all on his face. Another suplex. No, here we go. Let's go for the devil smoke sleeper. It's over. He has He's a about to tap. In. Is he gonna tap? Better he taps he out. Can Shin it. gets the win. Also, with Shin what Nikito. we see from Shin Nikito, I guess the real test will be what we see from Jin tonight. But so far, Jin has been the most dominant competitor. Do you think that Shin can still keep up? I, I, I don't know. These last two performances, I mean, Shin has somehow managed to eke out the win at the last minute, but it seems like he's been struggling. It, it looks more like he I survived mean, rather than he won. Yeah. I mean, Bad Boy put on a really great performance in this match. I can't say the same for Shin. In the last match, Felix. Great performance. Can't say the same for Shin. In the next match, in the next night, he's facing Stoner. I don't know what to say to that. I don't know either. And he still has to compete with Chadwick. Still living in the back, another man he had a pretty deep rivalry with. But what's it? It ain't, it ain't looking good for Shin right now. Shin's got to do something. Because whatever he's doing right now, that ain't working. It's working to get him to win, but it ain't working in the long run. It wins a win. Doesn't have to look pretty. Ooh, and kind of. And then positive they, there. He has four and battery has two. Walk into our main event, ladies and gentlemen. Jen Kazi versus Moses. Oh, no, not Moses, man. Oh, yes, Moses. I'm excited for this match. I'm excited, too. No, not the first time Moses has been in ring with a Kaze at all. Yep. He's, he's been in ring with his son thus before. far. And if he's struggling with Sun, can he beat Big Papa? Well, he didn't struggle much with Sukun. Sukun kind of won that match, I would say, slip on a banana peel. I mean, Sukun was getting his ass kicked for some most of that match, I would say. But st most, uh, Moses has evolved a little bit more since then. So, I don't know. He might dominate Jin Kaze here. He was dominating Chadwick in his match. Chadwick kind of got that win by uh, his palm pin. But we know that Jin can escape a match just as good as anybody. This is true. And if he can do that uh, Kaze like roll up that Suki did to beat him, yeah, what a and slap that, in the face that would just, be. But like, there is the wind tell master. You, what kind of chances does Moses have of beating Jin Kaze when he can't beat Suki and Kaze? Everybody knows Jin Kaze is easily way better than his son. It's not even a question. Well, uh, yeah. He's smarter, more ruthless, a better striker. More charismatic. Yeah. Oh, damn, you're just going to bury Sugan like that? Okay, I mean, I know he's not the best wrestler in the world, but... You know, it's Kage. good, and he's, he's shown a lot of fire since coming to NBC. Definitely more of that Kaze charisma. But 
we there's get it, growth, they, but there's not the full potential. Style was meant to counter Sukin. Sukin is more of a high flyer. That powerhouse style serves as the perfect counter. Jin isn't a traditional high flyer. He's more of a striker, and he has more technical prowess. And he's definitely grounded his game as he's gotten older. Yeah, not to mention he's a lot more ruthless and a lot more cunning. Yeah, but the question is, that strong win, is he willing to pull it out for this match? Now we know that that knee is, is not 100%. Is it worth it against Moses? I mean, he didn't use it against TJ. Not at all. That Winds of Chains was able to put TJ down. It didn't put him down the first time, but the second time did the charm. But I don't think he get Moses up for the Winds of Chains. That takes a lot of knee strength from our list your opponent up. And at that, Moses is like twice TJ's size. I don't think he can lift Moses up. I wouldn't say twice TJ's size. TJ's a good 6'4". TJ's 6'4", but Moses is 6'6". And on top of that, he's over 300 pounds. TJ is not at 300 pounds. Moses yeah. is and almost I mean, all One thing muscle. about Moses is the fact that even though he's a bigger guy and a powerhouse, he's deceptively smart. Cat yeah, like Moses you is... of 125. Exactly. And now on top of that, Mo oh, Jesus Christ, there's that He has again. all the tools, but he hasn't been the most successful singles-wise, though. And there is that stature just covering the lights. And the thing is, Moses, since map based combat, we've noticed it's been improving on his striking game. A adapting a finisher that's spitting back kick as his new finisher now. He's going to yeah, have to adapt to even more against this opponent. I don't think that striking was something he learned from Chad. I think that might have been something he learned from maybe the dojo here in, in uh, Japan. Maybe he came over here and started learning a thing or two. I mean, Chadwick, I think, was gone from Prodigy by that time. Nonetheless, there it is, guys. I can't wait. Here we go. He's going to get that for hand. Moses, here we go, starting off with the strikes. Oh, starting off with strikes against Jin, Dad. I don't know how smart that is. Smart. Oh, drop kick takes him down. I was about to say smart enough, but I don't know. Oh, dragon screw right to the knee. Wait, no, Jin. Dragon screw to the knee. A little bit of a tip for tap that, there. That one too, But there's the power game I was talking about earlier. Big man. Big man, little fish, Jin. Oh, the enemy hit the slap. There's nothing more disruptive against oh, slap. Oh, wow. Cross, didn't, even, say that didn't even knock him down. Not at all. Oh, there's a knee to the face. And a clothesline Jin outside of the ring. The advantage is to having muscle. I mean, that knee was not muscle. That was just, whoa, Jin countered that. Yeah, but all those moves that would knock a normal back. person down. It barely but faces But that combination him. there, he kneed him in the face, sent him in the ropes, and then immediately closed him outside the ring. That's the smart stuff I'm talking about from Moses that could win this tournament if he keeps going that way. He needs to win some matches. And Moses pulling Jin out of the ring. He seems comfortable out here. That's good. It's heavy punches to the head. Not wasting any time. Sending him right onto the apron. There we go, Moses work, working over. Oh, no, there's there's that striking prowess to Jin. Jin running back into the ring. He knows where he has him, at least for now. I spoke too soon because Moses punched it ahead. And that was a straight on close fist punch. It's like drop That could there. easily knock you out if that's full on impact there. Moses. Nope, Jin with the counter. Wait, Jin with a sleeper hold. Might be trying to put Moses to sleep here. That might be hey, a smart thing to do. Jin there. He has Moses in the sleeper. Moses is going to pass He's up. He's using his Moses. strength. There we go. Powers the damage. Under. Look at that. Big yeah, he did rock. slow him down to a, to a... But Moses follows it up with that Olympic slam. You think after that... That was smart on Jin, You think after that scare, Moses probably just wants to end this as quick as possible. Yeah. I would say so too. Where is he taking him I don't to? Blame him. He outside again. Outside the ring. 
Moses knows he might do a little bit more damage to Jen outside the ring that we all are leading on to think. He's always been, like, so good outside the ring. Yeah. Here we go. Moses, oh, Jesus, scoop slam onto the apron. Moses is kind of targeting every body part here I've seen so far, and I really just one in particular. We've seen the head, the back, the legs. I mean, I think he's just going with what he can get. He knows how dangerous Jin is. You can't just have to take all the chances that, that you're giving with Jin. Enziger, that one puts him down. There we go. He rocked him on Enziger. I didn't think he saw it coming. Drop kick, but Moses quickly getting out of the way. And look who was still on the ground at the end of that drop kick. There's another, another Olympic, Olympic slam. slam. Go for the pin. There we go. For the one, pin. One. Two. Two. Oh, and a close one. But Jin kicks out. What a huge win that would be if Moses pinned Jin Kaze. Moses going for that river splitter. Jin Kaze gets out of the way. Wait a minute, go for that roll no, up. No, no, no. One, Here we go. One. one. Oh, only one. That was the same pin that put away. Oh, no. And straight into the sleeper hold. Smart move. And Moses gets out of it again. Every time, it seems like it does more and more damage. Spinning back kick. Oh, Jin Kaze scouted that. Yeah. Moses scouted that one. And a lariat takedown. It does seem like he slows down. It does. Jin's unit is Targeting the elbow there. It seems like these men are kind of evenly matched. Or strikes. You ask me. But I don't know. Who is this favoring, in your opinion? Right now, I honestly got to go Moses. Jin seems like he's kind of fighting for his life at this point. Throwing him right into the corner. I don't know about fighting for his life. He's definitely done enough to keep this competitive. But... A little bit, but well, he... Yeah, we'll give him that. Oh, there's the he almost SCO. seems like the underdog. One. He is the underdog. He is the underdog. I will give you that. He is the underdog. And most times, Jin Kazi isn't the underdog, so that's very... Uh, oh, very nice that wrong there. Very much didn't have to roll outside of the ring. And that's a smart move. Moses could it looked like he point. might have been aiming for his shoulder and missed. Either the way, he didn't get all of it. Probably Punched probably to the head. So he Jin, springboard! Oh, missed it. Here we go. River splitter. No. Jin Kaze gets out of the way. Can't get it. Take down. Now, we've noticed that the river splitter has been countered probably more than any other move in the tournament so far. I mean, just yeah, Chadwick yeah, counted it, what a... was it, four times? Jin's already counted it twice? It's a very hard it a to very... hit for someone his size. Yeah, but he's he's going to keep trying it until he hits it, because if he hits it, he might be over for his opponent. Well, it's a high-risk, high-reward thing, but I don't know if the risk is worth the reward. Yeah, I will say that much. Hasn't working since. But he's going to wear Jin down enough so that way when he hits he might want to go back to that pump it. handle slam. Oh, Ooh, a big roundhouse kick. That hit. And a big Yaranage slam. And there's that striking game I'm talking about that Moses is improving on. Jin not letting it happen. No, shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Jin, one, I mean, one. Two. Two. Oh, and now kick out there for Moses. Almost got it. Looks like Jen's trying to steal it. Wait, there's a slave hold again! But Moses didn't even get a, give him the chance to lock it in this time. I mean, you keep doing that move, they get smart to it. Yeah, that is true. Moses going for a suplex, but Jen countered. Oh, there. Back oh, into it! He's gonna, he's gonna keep trying it! Oh, Jen! Letting go of it! Setting him up for a guillotine! Too close. Uh, Moses is... Falling towards the ropes there. Very smart use of his body weight. You know, very interesting thing about that Gigi. Wait, flip over his head. Knee strike to the head of Jin Kaze. Jin's back up to his feet, though. DDT. Going for a pin. Instantly going for the pin. One. One. Two. Two. What a kick out from Moses. I think Moses went on the The fact right that here. Jin went for a pin so quickly... It's a sign of respect from Jin to Moses. Well, yeah, Jin hasn't 
I don't think Jin's really taught it at all in this match. Oh. Jin's taking him very seriously. Yeah, I would say so. Jin almost always talks in his matches. Jin go for a swan time with Moses. Got out of the way. Didn't, Jin didn't even waste up. much time there. No, not at all. Oh, big knee strike. Right to the midsection. This is definitely a match that Jin Kazi has taken 100% seriously, unlike a lot of the matches he's had in the past. Jin very much respecting the big man here. Yeah, very much so. Big kick. Endorsement comes in more ways than just the handshake. He's going for something there, but Jin getting out of it. What is this? Might be going for that sleeper again, but Moses. No. Big elbow to the back of the head. Whoa. Whoa, what is this? Look at that combination there from Moses. That That's was... a new one from him. That's a damn he had warrior. That... He had that one saved in the trunk. <laughs> he knew, and this one could have put him down as he's stretching out the face of Jen Kaze. But Jen Kaze put his hands on the rope. Hey, big match calls for big moves, right? Very much so. Forcing Jin down to the ground. Gonna change to be a little more back and forth now. Here we go. Power him up over his head with a power bomb. Ooh, and that took a lot of force into it. The back of Jin's head getting some of those ropes. Well, I'm hearing a lot of movement in here. Is Alex Avalos in, in here? Hello, hello, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Pardon for the delay. Oh, the Jin Kazi catches him. Here we go. Some kicks. I see a Jin Kazi match up and close. And boom, so far I see him destroying Moses. No, nah, Moses is dominating no, most Moses. of this match. He just came in exactly. at the right time. Yeah, he's just coming back a little bit. A little more back belly and forth to now. That was a rigorous belly to belly. One. Been one. Two. 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 Oh, and a close one again. So Jin Kaze, close. Listen, Alex. Jin Kaze has not once taunted in this match. Jin is taking Moses very seriously. Yeah, I was going to be like, normally oh. Jin Kaze being the win match. Oh, the oh it, it's Moses pounding his chest here. But like I, I mean, I would say so. I mean, Moses has put up a fight against Jin Kaze. I haven't seen anyone do it in a long time. But, but Jin making Moses pay. Could catch him. This isn't a good idea. Oh. Knee strike to the head. There we go. Not quite the strong win, but something there. And you saw he kind of knocked Moses his leg down. There almost extinctively. There was a taunt there for a second. Falling drop kick. Oh wow. Well, Mo Moses That's said, you know, Jin said, if you're gonna taunt Moses, I'm, I'm gonna do it too. Oh, so he's giving yeah. it back to him. Yeah, he, he Moses I mean, might Moses... have woken up the sleeping lion here. I mean, Moses didn't taunt up to that point either. He got him kicked. Is he gonna go for a snap suplex? No, he's he's not gonna suit. He hasn't listed up Moses at all in this match. Kind of hard to. I mean, Tyler, Ooh, would you be Moses able to lift up him. Moses, Tyler? Moses, there we go, lifting up Jim with these. Oh my God! Would you? Oh, and right down to the mat. Would you be able to lift up Moses, Tyler? I never said I could. Elbows in the face. Oh, Moses retaliated with a bigger one. What is Moses going for? Big blow to the back of the head. Once again, just forcing Jim Kazi up in the air. Stay guys right into the corner. Jim right back up to his feet. And Moses no, right isn't afraid to get dirty, just like Jen. We haven't seen, we really see Moses get too dirty, though. No, his, but, but he's not doing this really rule breaking there. But oh my across god, the ring he crossed him the across the ring. This is unlike any Jinkazi match I've seen, though. Jinkazi has never been dominated like this before. I mean, he, he's been able to put up spurts of offense, especially there once Moses started taunting. But, but Moses' size might just be too much. My concern is in this match, is you know. Both, you know, Moses and OG. Jin, there we go. That's Marty Moses there. Way from outside the ring, hit it with a bulldog. As I was saying, my concern is, um, do you think, you know, there's a lot of Moses' play since, you know, OG Samada failed to win the prior night? 
and now he's going to step up to the plate and, you know, do an homage to his partner and himself to actually get a victory in this G1 tournament. That's a fair point. Yeah, and so far, uh, United Desecration being uh, 0-3. Yeah, neither of them have gotten wins yet. And we all know Jin Kazi wants that clean sweep. He wants to be, you know, the one. The unbeatable one. Jin, Ray Moses, oh my lord! Just throwing him up in the air with ease. There we go, hip toss, knee strike once again. Now we're going to see the river Simon splitter. Just gets back in control more times than Jin has in this match. One. One. Two. Two. Ooh. Two kicking and out kicking there. Hard. But doesn't it seem like Moses might be getting a little desperate? Because I've seen him use the same offense over and over again on the outside and on the inside. Right, he might be going for that. Oh, no. No, what is it? Oh, look at his accordion. Ring. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. He is really stretching out Jin here. This is going to be gonna over for Jin. Out. Jin's got to tap out. Come on, Jin. I'm, done. I'm not saying tap out, but, man. There's nothing else you can... Wait a minute. Jin's, Jin's, Jin's power got a bit... Arm, Arm drag. drag! Smart counter there by the veteran. Work on Arm Rana! Well, yeah, sure, Jin. Yeah, you know, need the... um. Now he's put a feel back in his knee. That's why he did it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, oh he didn't hit it. Moses didn't all even flinch. He knew Jim wasn't going to hit that. Ooh, you got lucky that Moses Moses calculated this whole thing and said he ain't gonna hit it. I'm not even gonna. Well, like I said, he's a pretty smart guy. Power bomb. Moses Power bomb. Over here. Power bomb. Wait, wants it. Wants the table. Wants the table. Oh my oh, lord! Wow. Like I said, Moses is not afraid to get dirty. No, um, he's going for another one. He's going for another power bomb. A high power bomb this time, but Jin, get out of it. Neckbreaker. That has to put a toll on the back, though. None of the monitors or anything was removed from Look, the Jin table. Jin didn't even take a second to taunt in the ring. He said, no, I'm going to finish this as quick as I can. He's trying to, but keep in mind, his back must have hurt. He hit that table pretty hard. He's got to do something that can hurt the back of Moses just enough. Now I don't know what that is. I mean, we know he can't lift them, man, but he might as well just strike him to death. Well, his sleepers we have been him, working. You know oh, what he can do? He can oh, no. the barricade! Hey, there's your answer, Tyler. You wanted him to hurt Moses' back. You got your answer. Yeah, there it is. He can't lift him, but he can definitely spear him. Fans are lucky they got those seats. Yeah, the fans are saying this is awesome, and you know what? We have to agree. This match as a whole has been awesome, honestly. This is the true embodiment of David versus Goliath. You have the small man in Jin Kazi, the smart Jin taking advantage. And then the power monster behemoth, that is Moses. Yeah, we were talking about how Jin Kazi earlier was kind of the underdog. And it's, it's rare, it's very rare to it's call Jin Kazi the underdog. You're kind of trying to maybe finish this on the outside, get that count out win. Jin's kind of toying with him right now. He knows that he has him where he wants him. The referee's at 13. He might have flipped the switch on Jin Kazi here. The good old switch. I think he did because Jin's getting a little more aggressive. Oh, no. Jin said, I want, I want to beat get the you best in the ring. You. Top rope. Are we going to see it? Oh, no. I thought he was going to go for the Tempest there. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Jin Kazi hitting his knee right on the temple. That definitely hurt him. More than probably hurt Moses. But Jin's back up to Took a lot right. out of him. What's he going to go in the floor now? But Jin, springboard elbow drop. Not often we see Jin in the high fly here. Whatever it takes to beat this man, I guess. Jin, DDT. another DDT. Big one at that. There's a method to the madness, I'm sure. But no, Moses serving it back with a headbutt. Oh, Jin. Jin serving it back. Here we go. Jin going to film kicks. Kicks right to the head, right to the chest. He's not done. He's killed going. The gale force picks that. And a final kick. Crowd's on their feet for this great match we're seeing right here. It's a guard. That one takes him down. I think I saw two fly out of Moses' mouth. Jin taking Moses down, but Moses gets out of that really quickly. 
Moses turning it around into a torture rack. I thought we were going to see another Moses one. determined to make Jin tap out. But Jin is not giving in at all. Jay, my big sister! Sleeper again! Right sleeper one more time! Ball. Pass out! No, Moses! Gets out of it once again! Go for close up, Jin! Wall up! It could be it! What? Oh, oh. No, not even a one! We're back into the sleeper once again! He's still trying it! It's gonna work! He's gonna get out of it! Desperate. Moses passes out! Moses passes out! But it works. Jin Kaz against the winner of Moses! By a submission, no less. He didn't tap out, he passed out. And it wasn't his usual submission. Jin's usual submission target the legs. Jin had to change up his whole game to beat Moses, but it worked. Well, look at it this way, man. His upper body was destroyed after that Listen, spear, so why go for the legs? This style of match is one I never see Jin work. Moses forced Jin to work a match that Jin doesn't really ever do. Yeah, body and, and head. That's the underdog, that stay on top of him, and that's use submissions. That will give Moses his props entirely. He put up probably the biggest fight I've seen him, and he didn't even he didn't even tap out at the end of the day. You think we could see a rematch? I want to see it. I really do, but Jin Kazi Remaining undefeated. is the winner of this match. Still undefeated. Walking into day six against Felix Ashwood. What does this mean for Moses, though, going into the future? I don't know, but it's... I don't Not know, looking too great for either of them. OJ Zamata really, or as look at the final Moses. As you look at the final standings right now, ladies and gentlemen, it goes as follows. We have Jin Kazi with four points, Chadwick with four points, Shin Gakito with four points, Battery Bradshaw two points, TJ two points, Stoner... Moses and Felix Ashwood all stuck at zero. Thank you all for watching day four of the G1 Comics. We'll see you all tomorrow for A Block Day 5. Peace out, guys.